connecting in the staff pose. And danda in yoga is a stick. So we find that the legs are very foundational. We've found that we're seating and grounded into the sit bones. So essentially from the, the staff pose, bring your hands back and just lean in a little bit as you lean in and open the chest. Take a look down the legs. And then as you breathe in, pull the toes towards you. So just the toes, just flare all the toes towards you. And then as you breathe out, curl your toes as if they're curling over a pencil. And let's go again, inhale and exhale. And this is just the toes receiving the nourishment. So there's this lovely feeling of spreading out through those toes and then slowly as you exhale curling them around a couple of pencils or you can really scrunch and crunch them up. Breathe in and breathe out. Open the nadis. Remember that as you sit tall if you're able to sit supporting yourself um, without using the arms, then that's also excellent for the postural muscles. And then you might want to separate the feet just a little bit hip wide. And let's move into the whole feet. So pointing out the fronts of the feet. So you get this feeling of elongation through the muscles and also through the skin. And then float up the toes and then squeeze the feet back so you are extending through the ankles. So we're going to breathe in, point the feet, exhale, flex. Extending and flexing. If you like, you're flexing forward and flexing backwards and allow your breath to be smooth and easy. So this becomes a really mindful activity. It's really settling for the brain and for the emotions to be using these joint releasing actions. Let's go into the circles. So again, if you need to separate the legs a little wider or bend the knees a little bit, you can. And let's circle the ankles around. And it, if you are allowing that little bit of a lean back, then enjoy. Inhale as the legs come in and exhale as the ankles turn out. So you will feel as you rotate those ankles, a little bit of that movement traveling along through the hips. But also it is good to isolate. Let's turn the other way. Try to make sure that your circles are very pure, clean and neat. And remember, you are breathing. If you get distracted, if your mind wanders away from movement or breath, that's fine. It happens to all of us. But let's try and bring ourselves into this present moment. Allow your right knee to bend now. And that may cause you to obviously sit a little bit differently. So lift and shift and holding the back of the thigh. So remember, you can always lean a little bit into the left palm or just hold the back of the thigh with both. And then let the leg lengthen and bend a few times. So inhale and exhale. Or you can breathe smoothly through a slightly faster knee bending action. But try to sit up quite well. So that requires light tone in the postural muscles. And then with that same right leg, we're just going to let it float out to the side. And as it does so, that this is a really relaxed, almost like a seated tree pose. You can place a cushion under here and then that's your choice. And then take hold of the right knee, cradling the right knee with your palm or bringing the palm underneath the thigh. And your left hand can be on the ankle or on the left thigh or on the mat. And then draw the knee up, guide it up so the foot stands. And then exhale and release it open. And I'm not pushing, pressing in a really harsh way. 
I'm just using guidance. So breathing in, maybe your foot stands and then exhale and you'll release the thigh open maybe there's a little bit of pressing not necessarily on the knee but on the inside thigh and you're finding a single yoga butterfly you don't need to press you can just guide that leg on its own breathing in as you sit tall and exhale and open your thigh out into single butterfly or of course this pose looks like Janu Sushasana and again inhale exhale and just notice what is the comfortable edge of your hip movement then what feels good do you need more support do you have you found that you're connected to your breathing all the way through and then we'll slide that away give it a little roll wiggle wiggle Come into second side. Again, readjust your seat if necessary. I'm going to hold the back of the thigh and lengthen and bend the knee. Inhale, lengthen, pause, feel, exhale, bend. You can also hold with your left hand as you place the right palm and again lean back a little bit if that helps. And you can move faster if you wish. So remember that we are also trying to get some warmth in and around the joints. Coming into the hip from the knee, release that left thigh open, resit as necessary, and guide the single butterfly with your palm and arm, or just bring the knee into the stand. Inhale, and as you exhale, open it out. Inhale as you draw the knee in. Remember that the heel does not have to be super close to the buttock bone. You can reach the foot further forward and have a gap, a bigger gap between the foot and the extended leg. And that Dandasana leg, let's press out through that right heel and make sure that that leg is still foundational and supporting your seat. So after three or four or five, breathing in and exhaling. Let's fold both in and draw your seat into uh, or onto edge of block or whatever's required. Hands behind can help as you press and lean slightly and flare out both thighs. And I always think a little bit of rocking here is really enjoyable. Breathing in and out and just finding this morning fanning of the hips and legs into seated Baddha Konasana, the bound angle butterfly, pausing here. And if you wish to progress or feel different sensations, holding ankles or wrapping around the feet sit tall and as you exhale dip forward and just notice on the exhale you may even want to reach your arms forward exhaling as you soften into the groins and then we'll slide to the right exhale as you reach your left arm forward just feel how that impacts your torso and your hips. Breathing in in the center and then slide over to the left some ways and reach your right arm forward and fold as much as you can. Remember that that can also be done with your body upright. You can slide over to the right. So we take a little side opening and lean and lengthen over to the left and flaring out the thighs. And then release to center, gather those knees in. Come into another seat. So you might want to kneel at this point. So you could sweep the legs around and flip into kneeling pose, or you could find that you prefer to just sit into seated Sukhasana. I'm going to come into kneeling. <sighs> you're kneeling and barefooted as we often are in our yoga practice it's really lovely to get the feet and the tops of the feet resting onto the folded blanket take a lovely breath in and out and then reach the arms forward and float the palms out and the palms are uppermost 
and then curl your fingers and thumbs in. So you make small fists and then open and spread the fingers out. And you can extend into T-shaped arms a bit like Warrior Two, or you can soften the elbows. So let's breathe in again and find that lovely space across the heart. And as you exhale, curl fingers and thumbs into a little fist. Crown lengthens, shoulders above the hips. Inhale, open, spread hands out. Exhale, close the fists. You might want to close your eyes and really come into the sensation of your joints, your body. How does your body feel? Often we are frantic and busy in our lives. And these types of practices, these classical have the joint series, gives us an opportunity to really slow down and come into a meditation in action. And after the next one, float the arms forward and place your palms facing inwards as if you're holding a ball. And then as you inhale, extend out through the wrists. So you really feel this open space here. And then curl them back in. So keeping this in mind as you flex the wrists and then maybe breathe and extend and open. Shoulders down the back, exhale. Wrist action now, so we're not making a fist with the palm, but we are possibly deciding to spread out the fingers and the thumbs. And can you feel how much impact, how much effect that's having along the skin and the muscles of your arms, forearms and the whole arm zone and the region into the shoulders. And then turn the palms forward as if you're making a stop sign and just float the arms above the head, breathing in. Lovely fullness of breath as you exhale, big, big circle, pressing the heels of the hands away and then bring the palms into center. And let's just do that twice more. Press away as if you're making a stop sign. Breathing in, expand the ribs, top of the in-breath pause, and then big exhale all the way around. You can squeeze the scapulae together and then press the palms into the heart. Inhale, stop and up. And exhale, circle. Soft palms, and then shake out hands and wrists and give them a circle, 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 and a circle, circle, circle. So circle in and out. Fingers to the shoulders, bending the elbows. Draw the upper arms towards your ears, breathing in. And exhale as you circle back and around. And this is a little slower and a little more precise on the shoulder. You might even round now as you draw the elbows together on your exhale. Breathe in as you crown, as your crown rises and the elbows rise up. And then hugging beside the ears and then Another breath as you roll back round, and you may even want to round in at the end. So we're starting to find that the movement in the arms and shoulders is patterning through the spine. One more like that, really good mind and breath connection. Shake out arms when you finish, and then release into all fours. And remember, if you're using a folded blanket, it's lovely to protect your knees. Let's come onto all fours. And as you press the palms away, we'll force knees below the hips. Just a little bit of movement, please, into your neck. So take care here. Inhale and just look forward to the top of the yoga mat. Or you can take that into a stronger neck extension. But we're going to keep the pelvis steady and just feel the joints in the neck. So maybe look forward, maybe look up, keep breathing. And um, eyes Look to the tip of your nose. And then as you exhale, look to that, fingernails, thumbnails, and then maybe into the inner elbows and then into your heart. 
and there is neck flexion there. Breathing in as you look forward and maybe look up, shoulder blades draw away, keep your pelvis steady. There's a tendency to want to lift that tail, isn't there? Let's keep the pelvis steady and then exhale, tabletop back as you look into heart. Centering, turn left and look to your left side or even towards your left shoulder. What can you see? And then just the head only turning right. Look to the right and then even look over your right shoulder. And then surrender buttocks towards the feet, open thighs and finding pose of child. And you may want to rest the head on one side or the forehead is resting. Lovely opportunity to find and refine your breath connection. So as you breathe in and breathe out, really full inflation of the lungs, front, back and sides. Can you even swell the belly? And now reach your arms forward and get ready for a kneeling salute. So as we breathe in, start to gather the energy of the in-breath, rise up. Top of the in-breath, full expanding. And then exhale as you bow to Mother Earth and forehead touches and palms rest, elbows rest. And you may want to allow one more round of breath in between, but we're going for two more of these. So when you are ready, to extend through the front of the body and come up and kneeling back bend. Find the best of yourself and then you are supported, of course, by Mother Earth as you bow down and soften. We rise and we bring our face to the sun just like all those trees and flowers that I saw and plants in the park this morning. And then the autumn time is that time of transition and change and the leaves start falling down to Mother Earth and we surrender and soften in. Please now draw your body back into all fours and Tiger pose, so as you find that your spine is available for moving cats, so maybe just check in that you have a good connection to spinal movement in Majjhari Asana and then adding in the hip extension. So I'm going to curl the leg up and back and try to visualize the back of the skull touching the sole of the foot on the in-breath, push the earth away. And then on the exhale, scoop through grounding and bringing your face towards the knee. You may even want to put the top of the toes down. And then again, breathing in as you curl and find a really powerful spinal musculature and then rounding all the way through. And center. And coming to your second side, curling the right thigh up and back, breathing in, exhaling, rounding, face to the knee. Be guided by your breathing. And after two rounds on each side, surrender, reach the palms forward, curl the toes, and as you curl the toes, just rock back onto the toes. So you lift the buttocks into all fours, maybe really make sure you freed up the toes, and then rock back onto the toes. And if you can allow kneeling toe stand, do so now. So we get some more nourishment into those toe joints. So we're sitting purposefully onto the balls of the feet, allowing a couple more committed 
focused grounds of breath. Finding now down face dog as you raise the hips high and come up into those beautiful legs and then surrender the heels if necessary or we'll work again through the balls of the feet bending the knees coming up to the spreading of the toes tailbone rises crouching dog and then as you peel those hips up elongate through the legs and send the heels down so pure coordination and meditation of breath inhale lift your hips high so you're on the balls of the feet and you can stay in those firm high legs or bend your knees and then pause as you exhale high hips some of us surrendering the heels down lengthening the feet now step your right foot forward high lunge and as your left knee comes down rise up above the pelvis breathe in palms lightly touch exhale circle the arms down remember that in this action you can also lower your pelvis if that feels good for your hips and remember that sometimes when we do that the knee moves over the toes and so that will be your body's choice as to whether that feels appropriate so we're inhaling arms up back bend touch light touch to part fingers palms together and then exhale big circle and possibly even surrendering down and coming into that lower lunge and with fingers on earth and blocks roll back now draw the chest forward and as you straighten the front leg find that lovely alignment between the hip knee and ankle and then you'll feel the hamstrings and we will flex again into the foot if you can lift that foot away from mother earth inhale and exhale point the foot and toes and they curl forwards and you may want to soften your knee or find that on the next exhalation you fold into that half pyramid let's act in another breath breathing in as you pull your foot away from the earth press the heel in exhale curl and fold and then press the right heel under the right knee lift the left knee return to high lunge and slide back into your down face dog and if necessary you can of course rest in kneeling pose or in child's pose fill your awareness with conscious yoga breathing whether you are resting now in the pose of child kneeling or remaining in your down face dog and then we'll begin to consider bringing the left leg forward inhale exhale left foot forward right knee down finding low lunge inner thighs are strong and then as you raise shoulders above hips breathing arms circle overhead touch palms exhale circle and lowering the hips if that's appropriate to you inhale open touch heart opens back bend exhaling and circling two or three and we're moving into half pyramid so fingers down by earth or blocks maybe you want to soften the back foot breathe in and as you exhale draw the hips back and the idea is that eventually, of course, you really elongate and straighten the front leg. And we're just going to pull the foot away and flex into the ankle. And you may be much higher. You might even be holding your blocks here. Find your breath. Find good alignment. Breathe in as you exhale. Point the foot, point the toes and fold over the leg. Inhale, chest rises, sternum lifts 
extend crown away from hips and pick up that foot and really feel especially feel that your heel is magnetizing back to that hip so you get this lovely strong pulling energy there and then exhale fold slowly return to low lunge softening pelvis left knee above the left ankle pause here for a moment and then curl the back toes, rise back to your high lunge, sliding back to down face dog. Press out through the feet, maybe give yourself a little side sway. So letting the hips sway to the left with strong energy in the arms and letting the hips sway to the right. Knees come down, elbows come down. Bring your elbows directly below the shoulders and touch your palms together. And you might want to interlace them. And then circle your hips and pelvis. Let this be very self-soothing. So after you've circled your hips and pelvis, notice that you are also circling your shoulder joints and then flow in the other direction. Try to let breath flow all the way through. That constant stream of yoga breathing as you flow your movements is the heart of yoga, it's the essence of yoga practice. And then separate your palms, so if they were interlaced or touching in Namaste, separate them. And from the movement of the elbow joints, with the elbows directly below the shoulders, press through the palms and just rise up into all fours. And then lower down. So elbows, try to get your hand, wrist and elbow and shoulder to rise and lower in perfect synchronicity and alignment. Breathing in as you press and come up to your all fours and exhaling, bend the elbows and set them down. Inhale, rise. Push earth away. Tuck exhale squeeze and hug inwards and let them lower and what often happens is that people's elbows including maybe yours tend to want to wing out so this is quite a good way of just trying to train those muscles joints and bones to act in good stability for you especially for our next posture the elbow dog or the half dog dolphin now, of course, if your elbows are winging out, then please return to the interlaced position. So honour the fact that they want to go into that kind of, uh, if you like, you've got a triangle shape in front of you. But if you're managing to keep those two definitive L shapes, press in now, walk your knees a little closer in. You may even want to bring, you are having knees below hips, but you might want to bring them slightly closer to your elbows. And then rise up into your elbow dog, press back into the legs and just feel the extra elongation on your hamstrings as you press the heels down and then release and allow yourself to adjust your alignment if necessary. Inhale and then hollow the belly, exhale, scoop and lift up tall, you're on the balls of the feet and then reach the heels back down. Try to keep the hips high. You can always walk the feet in a little bit more if that's good for your body, but remember your shoulders are drawing well away from your ears and your head is not on the mat. So one more focused, Breath in and out in pose of dolphin. And then sit back on your feet and then come into resitting and legs out front, which is where we started. 
and then fold your right thigh and knee. So we're in almost like seated tree. And bring that right heel into the thigh for Janice Shasana. And just let that thigh open out. Your left foot can point and flex, and you can even add another little ankle stir. Bring your palms into the heart center. Quietly let your body settle. Breathe in as the arms sweep overhead. And as you exhale, reach forward. Remember that there are kind of some different angles you can explore. You can reach forward so your body is kind of in between the open thigh and the extended leg. And of course, you can classically reach over that left leg as you require. So let's again breathe in and raise the arms, lift the chest, maybe even look up. And as you exhale, extend your heart forward and bring the palms down and just explore your fold now. Letting yourself surrender into pose in the most ex um, expressive, desirable evocation of this posture right now. So one more breath in and out. Try to let the hips soften, let the right thigh open and be clear about the softening of the facial muscles. And slow release as you lean back, shake out your legs when we go now towards our second side. Sit tall in your Dandasana, feel open and ready. And fold your left heel into the perineum or make your own adjustments to your body as is required to find this approximate pose of head to knee, Janu Sashasana. Arms up as you breathe in, you may want to touch or extend and then exhale, flow forward. You don't even have to reach the floor. Sometimes it's quite nice just to extend in a very beautiful, almost giving ways, if you are reaching towards. Inhale, rise. And you might circle, exhale and fold. So two or three movements to find your head to knee, or remember you might be resting in the center of the legs and therefore not forcing your body to draw over that extended leg. We're gonna flex into that right heel if we feel we want more of that sensation along the hamstrings. And remember that when we're grounded in yoga, it's about being open to internal feelings and sensations. A grounded yoga practice is really good for reflection, for contemplation, for turning towards one true self, for being open-minded to what shows up. And then release, leaning back a little bit, shake out those legs again. And do make sure you're warming up because now you're coming down completely to Mother Earth. So let your body roll down to Earth and bring your right thigh into the chest and reach the left leg down along the mat and settle in. So first of all, let the thigh as it compresses down onto your chest. So this is Palangmottasana. Again, it's a, there's a whole second series of joint actions, but we're just going to take this one. There are many more in the abdominal digestion series. So inhale. As you exhale, curl the chin in, let the body float up, curl up, and maybe your crown raises and nose to knee for some, and then release. Integrate body, mind and breath. Breathe in as you exhale, curl. You might even want to wrap hands around your foot. And delicately release. Slide that leg away, feel the hips opening, softening the joints and the groins there, and then fold your left thigh in. You can hold, of course, shin or back of thigh. Inhale, exhale, curl. 
Let them breathing in as you lay down. Soften, exhale, soften. And again, fullness of in breath, really deep and present. Exhale, curling in. Slide legs away, give them a little wiggle. And then fold both thighs in. Wait to be guided by your fullness of inhalation and really swell in all areas. And exhale, hug and wrap and squeeze. Breathing in as you settle. And exhaling to hug and squeeze. Pose an apanasana. And then lay your arms out as your feet come down. Knees, hips and ankles together. And as you roll your legs to the right, roll your face and head and neck to the left. And let your left arm slide down. Closing your eyes, fullness of inhale, exhale. And then roll to centre and repeat on second side as knees, thighs and legs literally drape to the left. Roll head and face the neck to the right, lift down the right arm and then close eyes. Soften the face as you draw the knees back to centre and remain here in supine semi, closing the eyes integrating yourself to the mother earth now fully or more fully would of course be sliding legs and finding your full shavasana as long as there's no tugging on the back so resting now into the heart of your breathing in supine semi or full shavasana as you spread open your heart and re-soften the face, the shoulders, the arms and the legs. Be pleased and proud for showing up to your practice this morning. Generally observe how you feel. In yoga, when we are grounded, these poses and slow mindful practices are said to calm us and to bring equilibrium. Is that what you are also observing now? And how balanced is your breathing? Allow each out breath to be an invitation to further observation and to stillness. Allow each out breath to be further welcoming of body surrendering to Mother Earth. And notice how those contact points change. Perhaps your Low back waist begins to spread more. Perhaps you can feel a bit more softer in the tops of the thighs and the tops of the knee joints. Maybe even though we're turning towards cooler days, you can spread out your toes and soften the front, back and sides of your feet. A longer shavasana or relaxation period in your yoga practice is always welcome. But we are now beginning to draw this particular practice to a close. So gently open your eyes and just roll your head and neck left and right. Let it roll delicately along the earth. 
really softly, not trying to go anywhere fast. And then nod the head down, up and down a few times. Yes, yes, this is good. <laughs> when you feel able to move now, mindfully draw yourself back to sitting in the most careful and self-soothing way. So rocking, hugging, maybe rolling onto your side. And then find your seat collectively as we draw our palms into the heart center in Namaste. My soul meets your soul. While I continue my journey towards the self, so do you and so do we all. Remember that I am here to guide and support you on that journey and to help you in any way I can. Thank you for joining me in this Zoom class today. And thank you for unrolling your mat for your self-care. Have a lovely day ahead.